there must be some good reason to be sitting somewhere there in the back. Uh, we shall find out about the moment I finish in These are the administration people, they used to be in the back. And, yeah. uh, the if you're in the back, you get to be young again. That's the thing. Okay. Um, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure for us uh, to host today Professor Patricia Greenfield. Um, I'm going to do a very short introduction, uh, keeping in mind that I'll have to do introductions twice today. Uh, a much longer and thorough introduction will be done this evening. Uh, Professor Greenfield received her PhD from Harvard University and is currently Distinguished Professor of Psychology at UCLA, where she's a member of the Development Psychology Group. She's a past recipient of the American Association for the Advancement of Science Award for Behavioral Sciences uh, Research and has received teaching awards from USA, UCLA and the American Psychological Association. At the heart of Professor Greensfield's work is the notion that sociodemographic factors drive cultural values, learning environments, and ultimately developmental trajectories. Uh, I think that Professor uh, Greenfield will share with us some of her ideas now and many more this evening. So I encourage you and welcome you to come also today at 6 at the Bait Barstow. Uh, uh, Bar uh, the, the lecture for today is entitled Bridging Cultures for Latino Immigrant Families and Schools from Theory and Research to Practice Intervention and Dissemination. Professor Greenfield, thank you. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here, and thank you so much for, for having me. So, um, you know my title. Uh, so what is Bridging Cultures? Um, Bridging Cultures is a research-based cross-cultural training pr paradigm based on the notion that socio-demographic changes that occur in the process of immigration cause problems um, for immigrant parents, their children, and the schools that serve them. I think, although I'm talking about Latino immigrant uh, families to Los Angeles, um, I believe that because Israel has experienced uh, so many culturally diverse waves of um, immigration and is so culturally diverse internally, um, I think you'll actually find this uh, conceptually very relevant. Um, I'm going to start with the theory as it now stands. It, it's uh, been refined in the course of doing the Bridging Cultures Project as well as other related research. And the theoretical rubric I'm going to use will be exactly the same one I used tonight, but in a, in a, not in an immigration situation tonight. Tonight it'll, it will be um, uh, the situation of long-term um, cultural um, and social change. So I'm going to start with the theory and then go on to um, research, the professional development and practice that was based on the research, intervention, and dissemination. So it's really all about the application of the theory um, to education and to uh, multicultural education in a sense, or cross-cultural education. So in terms of the theory, it's a multi-level causal model in which socio-demographics um, influence cultural values, which in turn influence the learning environment and in, in turn um, influence uh, development and behavior, exactly what Svi said in his introduction. Um, here I'm going to, I'm, I'm expanding um, the socio-demographic level. Um, and um, it's based on Turney's, a German sociologist of the 1800s, who posited um, two ideal types of social environment. These are extremes. However, um, the ideal types are theoretically important because each characteristic on the left side of the um, of the rectangle is associated with one pathway of socialization and development. Um, while each characteristic on the right side is associated with a different pathway of socialization and development. Um, a special word about Gesellschaft, um, the right side. Part of being complex is, uh, well, let's go over the, actually the characteristics. So what is a, a Gemeinschaft? First of all, it's usually translated as community. 
um, and it's small scale, simple, poor, rural, education at home or informal education, little or no formal education. In contrast, um, a Gesellschaft environment, first of all, Gesellschaft is generally translated from the German as society. Uh, it's large scale, complex, rich, urban, uh, opportunity for formal education. Uh, so part of being com a complex Gesellschaft is having socioeconomic divisions and ethnic enclaves. And this um, complexity leads to having more Gemeinschaft communities uh, nested within Gesellschaft societies. These can be poor communities, for example, or pockets of immigrants or pockets of indigenous people. And I think this is um, very relevant to the situation of immigrants, um, which will be at the center of my presentation um, today. But in my theory, I've turned Turney's ideal types from absolutes into dimensions with relative values. And that's why the arrows are replacing the boxes. So each type of environment is associated with a different set of cultural values. Um, a collectivistic or familistic value system is adapted to a Gemeinschaft environment. Um, that's a collectivism is a cu cultural value system that focuses on goals for the collectivity, especially the family. Individualism, which is um, adapted to a Gesellschaft um, environment is a, a cultural value system that focuses on values for the individual. Research evidence indicates that the poor are more collectivistic, um, the rich more individualistic. Rural people are more collectivistic, urban more individualistic. Less formal education is associated with greater collectivism and more formal education is associated with greater individualism. So each socio-demographic environment has a set of values that are adaptive in it. Okay. Well, immigration usually takes place from poorer to richer societies, poorer to richer environments. Um, and indeed, the, the top left side of this diagram over here uh, is a socio-demographic portrait of the overwhelming majority of people who come to California from Mexico and even Central America, um, especially in the 80s and 90s. And this is the population I'm going to talk about. You may think of other populations who have come to Israel from similar um, environments. So I'm going to talk about Mexican immigrants to California and now to other parts of the United States. They're usually poor rural and have had little opportunity for formal education in their um, homeland environments. Um, so their collectivism is multiply determined by all of these socio-demographic factors. But so is the individualism of the United States. Um, we not only inherited from Northern Europe uh, an ideology of rugged individualism, but we're predominantly rich, urban, and well-educated. Um, so this socio-demographic portrait um, and contrast explains why the value conflict between the collectivism or familism these immigrants brought with them and the individualism they meet here is especially severe for Latino immigrants in California and other parts of the, of, uh, the United States. This um, same socio-demographic transition is also historically relevant to the socio-demographic difference between many of the immigrants to Israel from the Middle East and North Africa, um, and the difference from them and the pre-existing Ashkenazi communi communities. And it's also relevant to the transitions um, that Israeli Bedouins and Arabs um, are, have been currently um, making. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that um, tonight because we're starting some uh, research in, uh, in collaboration with a colleague, uh, Michael Weinstock, at Ben-Gurion University that has to do with that um, transition. So, um, therefore, on the, on the cultural level, Latino immigrants to the United States 
um, from Mexico and Central America are also immigrating from a more collectivistic to a more individualistic environment.